We are back. It is now 739 this Saturday morning and yesterday marked a historical day as the FDA issued an emergency use authorization for the first COVID-19 vaccine in the US. The US became the sixth country to authorize this vaccine. So what comes next and should we all be preparing to put our arms out for this or maybe not just yet? Here to offer her scientific perspective is nine health expert Dr. Pyle Coley. Also just in general, great life expert gives me all my advice for everything. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Coley, let me just start off with the most important question that I think a lot of people are wanting to know right now is that with yesterday's news, is this the last step now that we're seeing and the vaccine is just ready to be distributed? You know, Jordan, it seems like there's always one additional step. And in this case, there's just one more step. But the good news is that the vaccine can start being distributed simultaneously with this last step. So the last step is really the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, which is a committee from the CDC that's now going to meet. And the CDC is going to formally recommend the who, what, when, where, and how of vaccination. So the FDA, the regulatory drug agency, has approved it. Now the CDC will authorize it. And President Trump said in a statement yesterday, Day, that in less than 24 hours, the first Americans are going to start to get it. And he also guaranteed that it's going to be free to all Americans. So all really good news yesterday. And I think this is really important to ask people uh, with a medical background like you, like yourself. But what do you personally think about this vaccine? Will you be getting it yourself and will you be recommending it to your friends and your family? Absolutely, 100% I'm going to be getting it. In fact, in just a couple of weeks, my hospital is going to start to administer it to me. I'm going to be in the phase 1B, and I'm definitely going to put my arm out. But I mean, I do want to say, do I have questions? Do I have unanswered questions? Are there potential risks of this vaccine? Absolutely. Nothing is foolproof. But everything in life is about difficult decisions, Jordan. And on this side, we have the risk of contracting and having complications from COVID-19. And on this side is those unanswered questions from vaccines. And if you weigh the scientific evidence. It is so far in favor of those vaccines that I encourage every single American when it's their turn to really roll up their sleeves and put their arm out and get that vaccine. How do you combat people who say, well, we don't even know what's in it. Why would I do this? What do you say to them? You know, I would say every single scientific progress that we've ever made, it's a step in its venturing into the unknown. There are a lot of antibiotics when they first came out. We didn't know what was in them. You know, people used to die of all kinds of infectious diseases that we couldn't treat. And now we've eradicated some of those with vaccination. So I would say that progress by definition has some degree of uncertainty. But the most important thing to be sure of is that we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's, which in this case we really have. The only thing we don't have in our favor is the tincture of time. We just don't have the luxury to wait and see what's going to you know, play out over the next five to 10 years. But again, with progress and a lot of different things, we really don't need to. And then I would also say that everything we do in life, whether it's getting on a plane or getting in a car, is a calculated risk. You know, the risk benefit for everything. So we really have to keep that in mind as well when we think about how you know to, about our health and how to stay as healthy as possible. Yeah, I like that. You know, and the CDC says that everyone who will be vaccinated will get vaccination cards. What are the purpose of these cards? Yeah, they sound very ominous and very big brother ish, but really it's only intended to serve the purpose of bookkeeping. So, you know, there's two doses of the vaccine separated by 21 days in the case of the Pfizer vaccine. So they want to make sure of a couple of things. First, that you don't fall off the timetable because it's not going to work as well if you do. Second, that you get the exact same sort of type of vaccine that you got the first time, because as the Moderna vaccine undergoes emergency use authorization next week, that will also start being administered, hopefully shortly. So you don't want to get one dose of the Pfizer and one dose of the Moderna because they don't work as well. And of course, you know, people are, are speculating and I wouldn't be surprised if these did end up being immunity cards to allow you access to businesses or restrict you access from businesses. We've seen a precedent of this happen in schools where we can't get our kids into schools unless they're vaccinated. So it's not entirely out of, out of the blue. Um, but of course, at this point, the purpose is intended just to be to make sure you get the right doses on the right timings. Yeah, that's a really good point. I remember just to live in my dorms in college, we had to prove that we had the vaccination for meningitis. So just kind of like that is what you're talking about. I, but let's be honest, for a lot of the people that are watching at home, it's going to be months before they're able or they're even eligible to receive this vaccine. Uh, so for those who want to get together over the holidays, how can they do so safely? Can they do so safely? 
Well, I think you know what I'm going to say is that the safest option, really what's recommended for everyone this year is to not gather and to not travel. But of course, we also know that some people are going to do it, choose to do it anyway. So if you are going to do it, then really try to mitigate those risks. And the best way to mitigate that risk of all the strategies that we have is that quarantine based strategy, which means you quarantine for you know, starting today because we're less than 14 days away from Christmas. And similarly, the people that you're meeting with quarantine from now until Christmas, and then you can safely gather without those masks and really feel comfortable. If you're going to travel, that resets the clock. So really what you want to do, if, you, if it's possible, is to travel and then quarantine. Because the minute you travel, you've already, you know, exposed yourself to people and really reset that clock. So testing-based strategy is also helpful to reduce the risks, but it's not nearly as foolproof as the quarantine based strategy. And for anyone who will spend all those days in quarantine, I have a very long list of TV shows and movies that I recently watched. Happy to share it with you, my friends. Uh, Dr. Coley, thank and you. And Taylor Swift songs. Right, and, the, and the new Taylor right, Swift Jordan? album. Yes, and you, you listen, this is a doctor telling you that this is this is prescribed to listen to this album. So uh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Dr. Coley, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I appreciate it very much.